This is Twit. I had a real simple question. Um, I travel with a laptop all the time. I'm absent-minded. I'm perfectly capable of leaving it on the plane. Um, I just use Microsoft BitLocker mm-hmm. um, for the main hard drive, a Lenovo laptop, and I have a Seagate old-fashioned you know, spinning disk drive. And I thought with BitLocker, I was pretty safe. And then I heard you this morning talking about all these other ways of encrypting your hard disk. Do I need to worry or is BitLocker adequate? It is more than adequate. By the way, you're not alone. 12,000 laptops are lost in airports every week. Every, <laughs> not every month, not every year, every week. <laughs> so this is a laptop. It's very common. In fact, you probably remember... The British government had uh, some employees who were storing, storing secret documents on their laptop, left them somewhere, lost them, and a goodly amount of British government secrets were lost. Yeah, I, I think it was the plans for Gulf War II. Some British army <laughs> yes. just left them in a laptop, in, in, in a cab. In, in a cab! Yeah. So this is a very common thing. BitLocker, which is the built-in encryption that comes with higher-end versions of Windows, Enterprise, and Pro, uh, is very good. Apple's Macintosh has File Vault. Same thing. The only issue on these two that I'll raise, and it's not a significant issue in my opinion, is that they're not open source. We don't know how exactly they do the encryption. More to the point, we don't know if governments have not requested backdoors or access somehow. So... Because you know the only, in my opinion, encryption you can truly trust is open source encryption that can be audited, because then you know there's no governmental backdoor. Whether Microsoft or Apple have given uh, the NSA, for example, keys, we don't know. I wouldn't worry about that. If you're a terrorist, maybe you should consider that. But if you're just a normal gent who doesn't want prying eyes looking at his contents of his hard drive. BitLocker is more than adequate. It's very it's strong encryption. Now the thing with BitLocker, you got to remember when they when you when you encrypt the disk it says, "Now would you like me to save those keys?" It's a certificate-based encryption system. You cannot lose those in, uh, certificates. Even if you know the password, if you don't have the certificate, you will never be able to unencrypt that drive. You'll have to go to the NSA and ask them. But otherwise you're safe, Julian. Uh, I I back up pretty pretty regularly. <laughs> yeah. at, in my office. And back so. up not only the contents of the drive, because you're backing up encrypted contents, but also the certificates. Very important to save those in a safe place. Yeah, but all I was saying was, if I if I lost my laptop, no, yes. what I care, care no. is nobody else You wouldn't can care. You wouldn't yeah. care. Now, if yeah. they can yeah. get your password to log in, as you know with BitLocker, once you're logged into your account, your yeah. contents are visible. So make sure you use a good password, because if they have your laptop... That's the other thing. Once they have physical access, they can try to brute force it. If your password is monkey123, inevitably they'll try that and they'll get in. But if you've used a good password that only you know and only you can remember that is, is fairly random, uh, then you're fine. And so I suggest with and a lot of times the temptation with a Windows password, and Windows 8 makes this really easy. They, they let you choose a four-digit pass key. That's not good. Four digits is 10,000 possible combinations. That's not good. Uh, you should use a strong full password, not a four-digit open it up, and it should use a password to come back from, wake from sleep, uh, wake from, um, you know, uh, shutdown. should always have the password, and make sure it's random. A good way to do this is pick a, pick the first sentence of your favorite book. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times, and use that. Or something you can easily, rec you know, type, but it won't be easily guessed. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it all makes total sense. Thank you Thanks, very much. Thanks, Julian. I appreciate it. Thanks. Good to talk to you. 12,000 laptops left in airports every week. Most are never returned. <laughs> so, in fact, the Department of Homeland Security is, is so concerned about so many laptops left behind that... Uh, they're trying to they're trying to let people know don't leave your laptop on the belt. TSA says we're not going to turn that laptop on. We are not going to try to analyze the hardware or anything like that. It's uh, we're just if if you know we'll keep it. We'll put it in the lost and found for thirty days. 
But after 30 days, they take the memory out, they take the hard drive out, they auction it off as surplus. It's government property. <laughs> Go to gsa.gov if you want to want buy one of those 12,000 lost laptops never recovered. Every week! So really, if you, particularly if you're carrying your computer around, encrypt it. And that goes for your smartphone. How much of your valuable data is on your smartphone? It's a pain, I know, to unlock it. But, but it really is a good idea to uh, encrypt it and use a strong password. Strong password, you know, the, the trick on passwords is the more random and the longer, the better. So a 20-character, completely random combination of upper and lower case letters, numbers, and punctuation, impossible to crack in, a, in not just a lifetime, within the lifetime of the universe. I mean, really good with existing computer hardware. But, of course, 20 characters, completely random. Who remembers that? So it's okay to use a passphrase. Put some punctuation in there, upper and lower case. That's fine. Don't use it was the best of times. It was the worst of times. But that's not a bad password. With the spaces, with the commas. Maybe put an exclamation mark at the end. And that's easy to remember. The first lyric of your favorite song. That's not as good as truly random, but it's pretty good. You want to get it better? Use just the first letters of the first word of your song and add some punctuation and some numbers. It's not a bad idea to take, for instance, I've mentioned this before, your childhood phone number. For some reason, that's something burned into our brains, right? Mom and dad said, what's your phone number? What's your phone number? What's your phone number? So it's in our brains. 4269458. I remember it <laughs> from when I was six years old, right? Add that to the end of any password. Now, it's highly unlikely that a bad guy is going to know your childhood password, uh, phone number. But you're going to remember it. It's seven additional numbers. It's not perfect. It shouldn't be your only password. Have a good password plus that. Those extra seven characters are so good. They add so much protection. Length is very, very valuable. My, uh, my friend Steve Gibson, our security guru, he does a security podcast on my Twit podcast network. Uh, calls it password padding, and it's a you know even if it's eight commas, it's just not something that's obvious, not guessable. It's not your only password. It's just making it that much longer, that much harder to crack. Have a good password, make but it has to be again easy to remember, easy to type because you're going to be typing it a lot. This is this is why people don't like passwords, because the ideal password is hard to remember and hard to type. And the more you need to do, and ideally it's always turned on, and the more you need to do it, the more likely you're going to put a post-it note on your screen, or you're going to use something easy, and that defeats the whole purpose. 8888 uh, Ask Leo is uh, the phone number. You'd be surprised at how many people's password is password. But I used uppercase P. <laughs> no, not good.